it's not what you think the world want to hear. It's not what you think I want to hear. It's not the, the vibe of the room. Right. This is controlling the narrative. And dash. Okay. Uh, so, um, there's no right answers. There's no wrong answers. It's just more like controlling the narrative. Everyone calls me Dash, Dash DUB. Some people may know me by the government name, Corey Whitmore. I'm owner and CEO of Media 22. Basically has three arms to it. It has a recording studio, Studio 22. Has an internet radio arm called Radio 22. And has a DJ services arm as well. Before that, I used to have an independent record label in Milwaukee, Wisconsin called Deuce Deuce Entertainment. Mainly hip-hop, R&B, and reggaeton. And when I first started, I was doing beat production before I started doing the engineering, and by the time I got to Deuce Deuce Entertainment, I was doing a little bit of everything. So out of all the many things that you do and represent, what is that one that you feel like, this is my horse? <sighs> horse may be the, the the thing that I haven't put together yet. Talking about an exclusive right now? Like, this is exclusive? Like the uh, People in my circle know, uh, but everybody else may not know. Okay. Um, so when I did the Media 22 thing, I did it in like a, you know, Almost like a four phase thing. It's almost like Avengers. You know how they got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you know Marvel got you know tier one, tier two, and all the other things that connected. Like the studio, the studio was kind of the first cog, and you was there at the initial start of the studio. I just had it in the basement. Word. Um, the radio was 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 the next was the supposed to be the one after that. Um, so that's up and running. That was 2018. Um, Media 22 started in 2017. DJing has always been a part of it as kind of the funnel of the money. Mm. It's not something I necessarily enjoy, but I had the equipment left over from the record label because we would be trying to go and perform places and it had no no setup. So we got tired of that or the setup wasn't very good. We just went and invested and just got us a PA system. We moved around. So I had that left over. So that's the DJ part. Fourth cog, China Brown Instrumentals, production company. My first passion, how I first got into music, is was me making beats. I was making beats far before I said, yo, let me figure out how to compress you or EQ you. So, you know, that was always a passion of mine that I just never had the time to really be able to go back and do. I basically, once I started the label, in the beginning, I made a lot of the beats and I had to fall off. Because as you already know, you're wearing so many hats. I can't spend all that time in production because stuff has to be marketed. Rehearsals got got to be done, uh, you know. Uh, gear gear merch has to be made, um, and all these things. So I wasn't able to do that. So you know, with my guy Vision coming in, um, who's it's who's Vision? Vision runs China Brown Instrumental. He, I've known him for a while. He used to be a part of Hood Profits with Deuce Deuce Entertainment. Word, 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 word. So we had that connection. He's still in the mill. He said, "Yo, I got this idea. Boom, let's do this." And I'm like, "Yo." I wanted to go in that direction, but I didn't have time to head it up. He'd taken, he'd taken that arm. The fifth arm, where I think that going to bring it all together, is the venue. The I got to get the venue. Right. The venue brings everything that I'm passionate about and the things that I want to do into one place. That's a fact. The radio works as the marketing arm. Mm. Anything that I'm working musically-wise, I can book, I can do. The things I love to do with the kids. I don't I haven't been able to do the things I used to do in Milwaukee uh, at the Boys and Girls Club where basically I was running the studio and doing things of that sort and really just working with the kids in that way. I can bring them into that. They can give them a platform. I can give other people that I see that need a platform and should have a platform that platform. And it all revolves around music. So you're talking like a, a co-working space or like something that... You performance space you, and a co-working space are you, are you i'm trying to picture it all <laughs> are you are you owning this whole building are you are you saying that or you just like want to be positioned within a space to i, hold I would like to have a venue of my own mm. period so when you say venue you know i'm thinking like performance too so i am have, thinking performance i'm thinking, thinking stage i'm thinking performances everything in house that's a fact <laughs> that's a fact. Well, you know I stand with that. Yeah, I already that's, know. That's an easy one. Yeah. I already... so, so, so with this is is more like. Let's be for real. This let's in, be real. It's, it's in Madison. Yeah. Right and. Which and is difficult the, in itself. Nah, nah. Where there's, where there's lack of, there's opportunity. True. Right, because that's what happened in Texas. 
That's what happened in New York. That's what happened in California. Right. Somebody probably with some deeper pockets had an idea, and then it spread because right. it was good enough. Right. So Madison is some like St. Louis in a way where you got to show them. Yep. You feel me? So it's like if this win this because it's manifesting whether it comes through whatever source, Madison will have a record label type of resource. Right. Right. But it's going to be used in the modern day world of like Netflix. Right. Meaning it's just like more affordable for a monthly rate. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, and that that's where it's going to become McDonald's. Mm -hmm. I don't care what time of the day it is. This place should be 24 hours. Right. You know what I mean? Accessible. Like in order for you to really make a pop and then the world news. Well, yeah, we should, we should, we should keep it here. We should, yeah. We should keep it here. We shouldn't rush off this topic. Right. Right. Because I think, what you think of this space? 1444. As a potential well, well, of something. Arden was, was something that was on my mind when it first closed. You know, what happened is I didn't have everything, all the ducks in a row to be able to make that grab. And I see now it's going to be an arcade. Now, if the arcade, for whatever reason, you know, I ain't trying to wish no ill on nobody, isn't able to do what it's trying to do and it goes back on the market, gonna I'm going to jump. They're going to hate regardless. Oh, I already anticipate that. They're going to hate regardless, but they're going to utilize the resource. Right. It's going to be somebody that they fuck with. Right. With you. So they're going to have to get their shit together eventually. And the, on, the other hesitation why I say I got to get things, I had to get things in order is because I know I'm going to have to jump through that many more hoops to get that space versus somebody else. I was watching like Roland Martin or whatever, and he has this little tagline that says, don't own, no loan. It was something like that, similar to that. Meaning like, you ain't got your own house, you don't own your own house. Yo, the percentage goes down for you to be able to get that business loan. Credit score. Credit score being at a certain high. I know my credit score probably going to have to be higher than somebody else's that applies. So that was that that was that first hesitation because I knew there were some things I needed to move and some things I had to put in order to knock down and knock over first right. before making that move. Which when you say marketing, radio is your is your vehicle for marketing. Correct. Like what are some of the ways you utilize radio? So when I looked at, at me trying to do, you know, in the beginning do these services, I'm like, what's an alternative way that I can get word of mouth out? You know, while I have these things going on, I was trying to think about passive marketing. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what can be running? What can be a cog that can be moving that can market what I'm doing without me having to be there? The radio was the thing that aligned with me and brought all those pieces together. Facebook has is, is basically like getting into almost a little bit of everything when it comes to business. That algorithm is is can, is making sure that they continue to make money and continue to put those ads out in front of people continue to get people hooked you already built up your entire marketing machine if you decided to move into another discipline it would be a wrap now i don't have something as big as facebook but i do have a radio station got wheels. and it has wheels yeah. and, and it's an internet radio station so it doesn't limit me locally mm. so i can go coast to coast and be able to reach out to people I, so my priority with the station is first is local. Who's next is the first flagship. Nobody cares with, with Craig Smith and Nick Hart. Stack Trace on there. We got DJ Flacco from Milwaukee. Our breaking and entering who does the same thing that Who's Next does, but does it in Milwaukee. The core of our platform is going to be local. We still want to make sure we're reaching out. Jenny from the beach in, in California. We got the Ryan show in New York. We got Nonstop out of New York. We got DJ Infamous out of New York. The OG show, uh, Cat Daddy out of uh, KC. What it sound like is you exercising a lot of control. The background of like radio um, business, you talk about it like it's, you know, second nature. But <laughs> it didn't always used to be is, like that, though. Is this easy? It's not easy because much with the label, I had to learn on the job. I mean, when I started my label, I started my label at 25. You know, I did an internship a year prior with BNN, um, which I'm thankful for the internship, but it taught me more of what not to do than what to do, which is still learning. But it doesn't say, hey, this is this is the right direction you should be going. And I'm just, it's kind of trial and error. Much, much with life, much with life, and especially with business, is trial and error. But those who aren't willing to take the trial and accept the error We'll never get that far ahead. I'm also general manager over at 95.5 FM here. 
So the combination of those things was like kind of thrown into a fire. Shout out my man Richard because I because he was in that position prior to me. Richard Jones, number one. Um, know what your niche is. Know who you're marketing to. Know what you're trying to do well. Doesn't mean you can't do a couple of different things, but there's something that has to be done. You want to do this better than the other person. The other thing is that you have to be willing to take an L financially in the beginning to get a W later. <laughs> it's not cheap to get into. You got you got to you got to kind of like with engineering. You know, you got to have your your program, automation program for radio. You're going to have to pay um, you're going to have to pay your PROs. If you're going to be playing whoever it is, the baby 50 cent, uh, you know, Megan the Stallion, yo, they eventually they're going to be coming for you to say, "Hey, yo, they get paid. They need their royalties." And if you're playing their music, like you're going to have to you're going to have to pony up. So you got to pay, you know, an artist pays one uh uh logs into uh one PRO that says, "Oh, I'm ASCAP, I'm BMI, I'm CSEC, and they collect my royalties." And radio, we have to pay all those people. Because we don't know what songwriter is affiliated with what PRO. So I can't just pay ASCAP, but then Megan Thee Stallion's on BMI, and I'm playing her music. So I got to pay ASCAP, I got to pay BMI, and I got to pay CSEC if I want to do stuff in the United States. If I want to do, if I want my stuff played in, in Canada, Europe, Africa, I got to pay those PROs. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's, what's the fees? Varies. We're paying around, I think it's around 1200 1400 It goes up every year. That's not bad. It's not bad. So it's annual? Yes. Oh, so that's dope. Yep. It's like you get your grind on. Do yep. Do your shit. Go take care of it. There's ways you can get, have, you can host your station. There's some platforms I believe are free. Like with most things, like with websites, comes with ads and other things on top of it. And it limits how much you can do it and make it your own. That's the other thing. We did our research and we said we weren't going to launch the station until we knew that we was going to have an app. Because as today works, as you already know, everybody everybody's getting access to everything from the phone. It It's not, yo, let me go in the car and let me turn on the radio and, and find the station for the most part. As a coach, as a black community, we like to call it a black house. Where are we? I would say we're looking for we're looking for leadership. Is is where is where I, I think we are. I think, unfortunately, I feel like we've we've split off in a number direct in a number of different directions. Um, and in a time like this, you know, we need to be closer together than ever. Whether it's you know whether it's educationally, whether it's financially, like we said, hey, my portfolio got to look like this. Why yours looks like this for me to try to get the same thing. Legislatively stacking up against us, using the term black house, we need to try to pull in our resources and as you've alluded to and said many times, control the narrative. That's why in everything that I've said in this conversation, it has been about controlling and owning. From your point of view, what would you say, where are we going? If we're going to take the strides and the steps ahead that we, that we need to be able to do, pull together our resources, See what we can do and control it. What's the process? I think number one, we have to stop internally tearing each other down. Not that we're the only people that do that, but that's the starting point. Because it's creating division. We can't afford to be pulling each other down. If we're going to get to the uh, spots and the positions that we want to be in to be able to exert some control. I'm not saying that, you know, I ain't got problems with folks. But at the same time, I don't feel like we need to be airing that. We need to show that, that we are a unified house, period. And whatever needs to be worked out, we need to figure out a way to work that out behind the scenes because other people see that and take advantage of that. When people see the crack, they're going to expose it. It's just, it's just like playing basketball. Yo, if, if your power forward weak, we, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and run the screen, get the power forward on them. We're going to shake them and, and step back and hit the three. We're just going to keep ex ex exploiting your weakness which I don't think is the whole thing, but I think it's a starting point. I think after that's done, we need to make more of a concerted effort to support each other, especially when we're looking to get positions of power, whether that's 
city council, alder, uh, uh, congress, you know, representative, whatever it may be. Um, when I first moved to Madison, I think I was here about a year, year or two, and Rob Dees uh, was running for alder. And every time, every time we bring up something politically, I, I, I admit to Rob Dees, I'm like, yo, I'm just kicking myself, G, because I could have did more, and I didn't do more. And I'm like, I'm like, yo, I, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let that happen again, because we could have had a different narrative. He could have influenced some change. That may have been the ticket for me to get that venue, but I didn't do the, I didn't do the work. I supported them. I did the basics, but I didn't do enough. I didn't go out of my way to make sure that brother got in the spot. We need to be doing that for each other. You got uh, Brandy Grayson. You got uh, Nikki Conklin. I did an interview with her. She's trying to she's running for Ald uh, Alder for District Nine over by um, Memorial. We got to be behind these people. And we got to do more than just show up. It got to be finances too. It got to be time, finances, or whatever you can do. The one thing I learned, the one thing I learned from the whole Trump era is that voting is not enough. Voting is not enough. And that was the last time that I just voted. Since then, I've been doing far more than voting. Whether it is giving you a platform, whether it is sending money. Yo, I sent money down to Georgia. <laughs> I'm, I'm not playing like it's it, it's a different game for me i feel i feel that we need to do whatever we can to make sure we have people that reflect our values where we're trying to go and can open up doors for us we need to do what we can to put them in position that's what the other side does that makes sense bro that makes perfect sense to me um what would you say what would you say is speaking of unified for what is something positive about the black house bro the black community Oh, there's a there's a whole lot that's positive about the black house and the black community. Black folks, man, black folks is the most passionate folks you're ever gonna meet. Black folks are some of the most forgiving folks <laughs> that you ever gonna meet. Black folks are some of the most talented folks that you ever is gonna meet. We have we have a wealth of resources inside of us, inside of all of us. Um I think what stymies that or what stops that sometimes um, are the structures that have been put in place over over a period of time, over history, to contain that, to create a disconnect within the house. You know, all those things have been done intentionally. I still remain optimistic. And we t start to take some of these steps. And, and in places we have, I mean, what they do, what they doing in Georgia and Atlanta right now? Who would have thought that? Oh, Who would have thought that? But that was that was time and time and time in the works. From the outside looking in, that joint looks strong. It looks like a united front. You got a homie with the studios down there, uh, Tyler Perry. I mean, yo, that's that's looking like a real life Wakanda right now. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, that's like a real life Wakanda. Now we got to figure out how to duplicate the blueprint. Because they had every level, making the decisions, slowly making the changes, turning that state blue. That was that was miracle work. I like to think my money has something to do with it, but I know it didn't. I didn't say that much. <laughs> Speaking of money, uh, this week, today, last month, this month, how many black businesses would you say you support? I don't, know, I don't have like a number, but I would say black businesses that I've supported. I mean. Anybody that is that has a product that's coming to me for a product, I've never mind spending, never mind dropping money. I try to bring together um, black businesses that don't know yet that they're a business. That's part of that's part of what the podcast or the radio station does is to bring people's ideas together, whether it is in podcast form or it is in radio form, and to show them how to monetize it. We got to get to this number so we can start selling pre roll. We can start selling post-roll advertisement. Here's what you need to do with your radio show, because if you get it syndicated, you can charge for these things. Then you can do these things. It, it's dope that it, you come here and you record and that you, you get out, whether it's a message or it's a show, but I'd rather have you be able to eat as well. Yeah. Anything that's sustainable has to have some sort of financial backing. So I'm not coming into it and say, oh man, these people are just going to volunteer for, 
for a year, two years, three years. I want to want them to do that because I would want them to receive something financially <laughs> from that too. How many times would you say you shop at Walmart? Twice. 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 Okay. So Especially you... now with the pandemic. I don't know going on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know going on all that, all that much. What's some of your common like things you would purchase from Walmart? I mean, they got everything. I don't even know. That's a good That's a good question. What did I, what did I purchase last time I went? Um... Uh, I don't know. I stay in the electronic section. So I don't think I'd really be any place else, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, Unless I had to go get, like, some cleaner or something. Right. Some wipes uh, or something. Right. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, check it out. Well, speaking, speaking of, like, you know, options, what are some, like, common black-owned businesses? Like, no matter where we go in the world, we're talking about Georgia and all that. Like, what is, like, common businesses that no matter where you go, black people, you might find a black-owned business that that's, that's the one is. Barbershop salon. Barbershop salon. Um, um, food, whether it is depending on where you're at, ribs, something like that. Um, I'm trying to think. You gotta say apparel. Yeah, most definitely. Everybody got a shirt. And this is gonna become like the trend. Like, right. You know how you had to have the J's? It's like, man, what right. you doing? You got your LLC? Right. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, and that's gonna be right. like the day where Corona can't kill it. What is something? Dash Dub is good at, but don't nobody know about it. Or like, what's an interest you have, or just something that you know that's not really known about you. My jumper used to be wet. <laughs> we, we got some we got, we got to see how them knees work, we but that see. jumper used to be wet. If you can't see footage, right <laughs> now, you gotta see footage. Ah, footage. YouTube been around, like you know. Oh, I, 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 I got some for you. I got some for you. Okay. Uh, young homie at the club was, was trying to clown me. Um, and then, uh, I had, I had dude, like, he had his, I think it was just off his camera phone, and he was talking mad mess. He came all the way down to the studio just to talk mess about playing ball. And I'm like, yo, I'm in boots, and in my get up, and I'll, st I'll still do the thing. So, I'll, I'll show you that. Okay, cool. Man. I got sure that. You send me that you know I'm, I'm going to show you, you that one. Jumper used to be wet. Did you get him, you get him on, on film? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to see the jumper. A little bit of the handle. It's a little oh, sloppy, man. but. <laughs> was you OC or you had control? Oh no, I had control. Say that, say that. Brother wanted to run it back too. That was sad. What is one problem that still gets to black people? Like a problem we have or a problem that has been created. Man, like that's even a better question. <laughs> so I would say that, you know, history has has put different races on different paths. And, and why that may be more prevalent in our path right now is because of the generation of wealth, generational wealth we don't have and that money that they grabbed from us. Thinking of Tulsa, thinking about uh, 40 acres and a mule, the, the, the things that were due to us, due to us or that we had that was either taken or that we didn't get. So we don't have history of bankers. I ain't got a cousin or uncle or whatever or somebody can reach back and say, yo, he was a banker. I, I don't have that. You know, my pops was born right outside Memphis, Tennessee. He he was born on a, a big old farm, walking two miles to school and back. That's what he knows. That's what his family knows. Take my mom, born in Inslee, right outside Birmingham, Alabama. Pops worked at a plant. Mom worked at the store. Store is still starting something different, but it's not banker. It's not real estate agent. It's not you know these cats messing around doing the hedge fund stuff with uh <laughs> with AMC and, and, and GameStop. It's not that. It's just not in our lineage. And if it were, I think I think you know we would, there would be less of that, and we'd be leading a different life because we would have somebody we could call, text. How do I set up this LLC the correct way? How, how am I supposed to, and when am I supposed to be paying taxes? Do I pay taxes on this? Do I not pay taxes on this? Can you refer me to an accountant so, that, so I can get this stuff done correctly? Oh, what's a, what's a, you know, what's a sales tax? What's a sales tax permit? You know, all these things that 
sometimes we don't get right away that we may make missteps and then we end up paying the price for it. We mainly have to do it through trial and error. Exactly. Why other people have to do it by making a phone call or sitting with somebody or that phone call hooks them up to the right person they can sit with to get it all done. But, but the thing about trial and error is that it makes you strong now. You have to learn how to persevere because things have, have gone wrong. No, I know you fucking strong. Though. Yeah. So uh, the analogy is if all the top athletes, prominent individuals, was to like basically retire mm. or you know start their own version of what they created or what they you know helped produce, like, would you think it'd be successful? What well, What would you rate as successful? Our independence. That's right. su success to me. Right. Using like the top people because right. of the financial resource they have. So here's what I would here's what I would say, and it kind of almost locks steps and ping pongs back to a lot of stuff we already said. Yeah. Can they do it? Of course they can do it. They got the money to do it. They can create it. Is it sustainable? That's where that's where my question comes in. Why do I question the sustainability of it? I question it because. One, the outlets that cover sports aren't owned by us. So they would have to have a deal locked in with an ESPN or TNT or some sort of outlets that can continually bring in viewers to continually make this run. NBA is about TV dollars. <laughs> and they flex that on them when they said, hey, we're going to come back. We're going to do this many games of the regular season so we can get some of that TV money and we're going to go into this bubble and do these playoffs. That's why I know my aunt, aunt cats had to get their checks too, and I understand that. Um, because you got people at all different salary levels on, on the NBA. But that was about, we need to not give up this TV money. We need to get this many games in so we can meet the criteria of this contract and we can make that money. TV money is what rules the NBA. So if they were going to try to do that, they can do it. Is it sustainable? They need to have relationships and deals in place with, you know, with TV, with TV uh, companies, channels that'll make sure that it gets seen. Um, the other thing, and I think we've had a conversation about this, is that black folks need to spend more money within their community. That's another piece. Now, it's a smaller piece because we only 14%. We're not going to be able to hold up the NBA on our shoulders. But at the same time, we can't be <laughs> we can't be spending that money other places if we're going to have things that are truly truly ours and sustainable. Because I think they I think the first 5 years, we could probably be on the backs of, you know, cats that are making millions, you know. The Stephs, the LeBrons, you'll have retired cats, I'm sure Jordan and, and some of these other cats will get in there and be able to fund it. But it needs to be something that can be going on for years and years and years. I don't see that you're able to do that without the TV people, without the television being in place and to make sure that our dollars are really being funneled into that more than funneled someplace else. It's never like talked about amongst like the, the people in the NBA, but do you think that's probably why they position Ice Cube to, to do the, like the big three thing just to test that idea out? Somebody got to play the sacrificial <laughs> layup sometimes. Because the NBA players had nothing to do. He ain't never played ball. That's probably due right. to a non compete right? Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. And I, it's, it, I'm curious. And, and it's... <sighs> And and that's that goes back to, you know, I mentioned Rob D's by name, but going back to putting black people in the position um, in which when the the time arises, we have somebody we can actually go to, hold a real conversation, just instead of saying, yo, just come to my office, you run your mouth, and he says, yeah, okay, we'll see what we can do. Someone that we can actually have a conversation with to see, can we navigate this and make this work? So it's, it's, it still goes back to making sure that we're putting our own people in position of power and doing whatever we can do to support them. That's why the thing with Brandy Grayson was was, was so important. It's still important. And I hope that that is part of what helps her get to the position that she's trying to go for. Same thing I did with Nikki Conklin. You know, trying to pull resources, things that we know that we can do and we can pull off that we aren't necessarily getting paid for, but it's almost like we're making that contribution through time. Let's talk about somebody that's really like taking steps to do it in America. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and that's Kanye West. Mm. Right? Did you know the Yeezy was, you know, made in America? I didn't know that. I did not know that. You, I made the, I thought you know. made the assumption it was someplace else. Let me tell you so I appreciate that. Huh? If you, 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 if you tapped in. Yeah. <laughs> Without knowing. If you tapped in. Right. And yes. And what is some of like the obvious, you know, that we know? But like, what are some of the benefits of just, you know what I mean? Kanye West, like setting that as, as an example by bringing his business to America where he knows right. it is not China. Right. Price wise. Right. You know what I mean? Like, what is like an example? Um... Well, it, it takes me back to takes me back to something else we talked about, me working at the Boys and Girls Club. So I took over this I took over the teen center there. Um it's a big teen center downstairs, whatever, on the south side. Um and basically they were trying to get their numbers back up because less te- less and less teens were coming. And the person before me had moved on, decided to take a different job, numbers were on the decline, they're saying, Hey, what can we do to increase numbers? You know, I followed the little peripheral things like, oh, yo, we could throw the dance. We could do that. And then, you know, I'll extend studio time. That should help bring people in. But you know what was the biggest thing? The biggest thing was being present and knowing that they had somebody that they could rely upon. That was more than extending studio hours, more than an extra hour in the gym because a lot of youth and people in general are looking for an example. And when they see it visually, that works on their belief system to say, well, then I can do that too. It can happen for me. So, you know, a lot of them coming in and out was like, well, I don't know what's going on. I thought, I thought you were going to have this out. I thought we was doing this and then so-and-so is not here or this is closed. It's not reliable. It's not something that I can see and continue to see and be like, okay, yeah, I'm going to buy into that. Mm-hmm. When they saw my my ugly mug there every day, <laughs> doing whatever, yo, let's, let's run the movies. Yo, let's do the Madden, let's do the Madden tournament or whatever. Yeah, I'll play just so y'all can run up the score on me and, and, and dance around me or whatever y'all want to do. That's cool. <laughs> and, and, you know, they started to, they started to see something that was consistent and started to buy in. Kanye works in the same way. People need to be able to see it and see somebody doing it and know that that's what they're doing to be able to buy in. So when they grow up or somebody that may be Kanye's age, they say, oh man, Kanye did did X, Y, and Z. Let me see how I did that. Okay, okay. So we may not be, I don't have that type of money, but I can still take part of this blueprint and apply it here and do something similar. Those, Those examples have to be set. And that's why that's so important. When you think of brands like Nike, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Beyond Jordan Duncan? <laughs> um, Talk about it. A brand that has taken millions from our community. That's a perspective. Um, and I know that they do things. I know that, you know, they got charities and things that they put back in, but it's like, the only place I really see Nike is on a brother's shoe. Like, I don't visually see the impact or the buildings or the community centers. And maybe they just haven't been in the, the spots that I've been. Yeah. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I've just missed it. Yeah. But the places I've been, I haven't seen more of a representation in the community that can give a positive impact beyond keeping somebody's shoes, uh, somebody's feet warm or you thinking you can now dunk because you got these. Or looking fly. If you if you basically had a dollar, yep. every Facebook friend you have, yep. would it be more money in your bank account or do you have more friends on Facebook? Uh, do I have more money in my bank account than if I gave everyone a dollar on Facebook? Nope. It's just you. Like, say like you got 5,000 friends on Facebook. Like yep. Yeah, I think I, that's what I got. I got the cap. I can't add nobody. So, right. So, <laughs> so is Facebook outdoing your bank account and, and friends you have? No. That's the question. Okay. But like, you know that's not always the reply. I already know that's not on the fly. And I have to be in a good place right now because you would have asked me that some other time. I may have gone the other way. You say your current job is something you can see yourself doing for the rest of your life. Why? Why not? Okay. I can do my business for life. Be, you know, the main thing is, you know, I have control. It's not controlling me. And it aligns with the things that I'm most passionate about. You know, the thing for anybody is to be able to invest all of yourself into something that you truly care about. 
and and able to exercise some sort of control. And too many times we're in a situation where we 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 don't have that. I mean, I've I've had jobs. Where I'm like, man, <laughs> I'm like, really? I'm like, I'm not even trying to get out this car. <laughs> but but I got I gotta get that check. I got bills, what? What? so I better drag my <laughs> my butt up there and get it done. And you know, I've always had in the back of my head like, I can't I can't keep doing this. Is it like any restrictions? Like, is this just stopping? Is there anything stopping you from doing something you want to do like right now? The only thing that's stopping me is is me. To be honest. Mm. Um. You know, I got I got a business and and you know I've, I've built a few things, but you know there are times even that we talked about today that I hesitate. You know ab about that next step. Is it is it you know you know how your mind plays tricks on you? Is right now the right time? No, actually I don't think it is. Maybe if we wait till da 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 da. -da. But is there ever really a right time? But sometimes our mind plays the tricks to say, hey, if you wait, this this will be a better time. Sometimes it works out that way. Sometimes it's not. I I look at it as a calculated risk sometimes, but you know, there's sometimes that you know, I, I may pull back and maybe not go all the way. But that's that's me. That's not something that somebody put on me. That's something internal. I think everybody has different things internally that can hold them back that they gotta figure out a way to overcome, depending on their experiences and what they've been through. So speaking of internally, let's calculate the black dot. Mm -hmm. Basically, did you know we spend over one trillion dollars every year? I am aware. Like, that's why I was asking the questions. Like, you know, like what's common things you go in like Walmart and buy? You know what I mean? Because like we we kill those categories. Yeah. It's basically the necessities, and that's why I'm like, so if that's where the dollar at, I mean, it's it's an easy win if we kind of like find a way to reverse that. Move the resources, yeah. You know what I mean? It's crazy because I put a, uh, something on a story about Claude Anderson. Across the street, there was a black guy on the grocery store over there. Guy pulled up while we were talking, parked in that by that grocery store, went over to the ice machine, pulled out a bag of ice, looked at the ice and rolled it around, looked at it, then put it back into the into the machine. And then he turned right around his car, backed it up, and came right across the street where we were to a thing called Jack's Liquor. Went in there, looked at it, and rolled it around, took it, went in and bought it. I asked him, I said, come here, sir. I said, why did you buy it over here? He said, oh, I didn't want to buy Mr. Williams ice over there. He said, I don't like his ice. It's too lumpy. White ice is smoother. <laughs> it all melts the same. You know, so yep. I respect, you know, Tyler Perry, like you were saying. I respect what all they doing down right. in Georgia. In the, in the South, period. Right. They've been pushing ownership. Um, are you familiar with reparations? Yes. Um, if black people were to receive their reparations right now, um, what is some that you would invest in? Definitely self. Um, self or community center. Just due to my history. So it'd either be something that goes directly into the community center if I can pull it off or put it into something in which I can flip and make more money off that money to then then get the community center. <laughs> I just see what an important role that plays. And... You know, if you can get the right people within that that community center, the long lasting influence they can have. What's some positive about being a local black owned business or just a local business in general? Um you know, since I moved here, for me, I li I like the interaction. I like getting to know people locally. It's it's not this faceless Amazon or something of that sort, like you can try and, and get to know what's going on in the neighborhood and get to know people, you can build relationships. And I think that's a big strength of a local business versus like you say, going into Walmart, they got their paid hello person. Um, <laughs> but after that, you're on your own. Hey man, the self-checkout ain't working. It was working before. I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> um, first, want to thank you. Appreciate it, one of many. Less work, man. Y'all been, y'all been grinding and doing it for a minute, man. Every time, every time I see you, it's a, it's a, it's a level up. Man, we try. Man, I love it. We try. I love it. Um, so yeah, definitely want to give you know you and the organization a shout out. 
Um, yo, for, for anybody doing interested in radio shows, podcasts, things of that sort, um, you can hit me up, myradio22.com, myradio22 at radio22.com. If you got tracks to send in, you know, you want to try and see if you could do a show or a podcast on there, let me know. Be on the lookout for Media 22, that's the brand I got. Um, that we're slowly starting to build. Um, hopefully, we got that venue. It's your boy Dash Dub. How am I controlling my narrative? Whatever I get into business wise, to try to own it and control it and dictate the things that we want to do and put out and how we want to help and influence the community. That's how we controlling it. And I advise you to try to do the same thing. Nice. That's it, bro. All right. <laughs>